Hey guys, it's that time again. Shiro Kuro tier list. As per usual with these videos, these are all just subjective to my opinions. Feel free to disagree, and if there's any characters I miss in feel free to disagree, and if there's any characters I missed, ask them in the comments. I'll try to give my opinions on them. We will go from one stars to two stars and three and then end off with three stars. Starting off, we have Serina. She's a really good healer. I'd probably give her an A tier. Ideally, you have her 2 star with EX level 3 and her first skill being around 7. And probably 377 is probably a good starting point for her recommended skills. Just a solid healer. She's okay. Sometimes you f I feel like you don't need her in this fight. But I'm actually currently using her on Extreme and JP. So she's she's still really really good. Now before I before I forget, the terrain is actually indoors this time, which means characters like Summer Azusa is all right indoors. Yeah, characters like Summer Azusa are very strong. And next up we have Asuna. Asuna, she kind of falls off now, mainly because we have a lot more. Mystic damage, so it's a bit more difficult to put her in the team, but I would say she's still a solid A tier. She doesn't outshine some of the stronger S tiers, but she's still a very solid character and she stays alive, so she's still at least an A tier in my opinion. Kotori is kind of lackluster. Her EX skill gives you a Defensive buff? Oh wait, for Asuna. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I should do this. Asuna. I need to double check sometimes because there's a lot of skills I need to remember. So for her skills, I think I would do EX skill first. And then I would probably do her sub skill actually because this attack speed modifier on top of this is actually really nice. And then this skill probably more important is probably more important than her passive skill. Mainly because even if she does have like a decent crit gear set, I feel like just having solid damage is more consistent. So that's how I would level her skills in, in that order. EX, sub, normal, passive. Ideally, you level them all kind of equally, but focus on that order more, right? So if you had enough resources to go, from, go for passive 4, but if you go for passive 4... Let's say you give up normal skill 6. Maybe you do normal skill 6. That, that's what I generally mean when I say stuff like that. Alright, so let's go back to Kotori. Kotori! She's really just a defensive character. And honestly, I feel like defensives are not really that great when you can just kill the boss. Especially nowadays when people are higher rank or higher level. It's a lot easier to do Shirokuro, especially in the higher difficulties. Now you are getting extreme, so it's going to be a little hard, but considering that, you wouldn't use her in your main team anyways, right? So I would say she's E, she's probably a B tier, or like low, low B maybe, high C, somewhere around there. For Kotori, I would... Probably just do EX skill and ignore everything else. You only really need you would only really use her for this defensive. Her damage is not that significant. Unless you have her higher rarity, and even then, she's a yellow damage on blue, on blue armor, so not that strong. Now let's move on to Yoshimi. Actually I feel like I should I should check out the skills for characters I feel are important and not really do every single character. So if you need a skill recommendation for certain characters, I'll, I would say just ask in the comments. It'll be a lot easier for me to respond. Alright, so let's go with Yoshimi. Yoshimi, I would say, is around probably C tier. Her damage on her EX skill is not that strong, and she doesn't really provide much besides that. Also, you don't get to stun the boss, so that part of her EX skill is wasted, making her a lot weaker than what she could be. Next up, Tsurugi. Now this character is actually insane. 
I would say just straight S tier. Now before that, there's a kind of a caveat. She kind of needs actual stars, right? She's she's a base one star because she's a free character from the event. So she's actually pretty really really easy to get. And she has a high affinity for the map, right? She's indoors. And what makes her really strong is she attacks really fast with barely any delay on top of having a bag for defense. This makes her really good to tank Shirokuro. All you really need to do is use her EX skill, and since it's really cheap at a 3 cost, it's not that difficult to constantly use just to keep the buff up. Now, with skill recommendation, now with skill recommendations, I would say her normal skill is most likely the most important one just because you use the skill so often. After that, her normal skill is very important because this is just essentially a free nuke, which also benefits from her sub skill, which you should level up after that. And finally, her passive skill. Now this is a little difficult to say just because her passive and sub skill are pretty much the same. Right, there's a 5 second downtime on her sub skill, but I feel like this steroid is really nice. Moving on, Pina. Pina, she's kind of a mediocre damage dealer in this fight. Even if her terrain is okay, she doesn't really do too much. Now the biggest problem really is just that she's a yellow damage dealer and the boss is blue armor. So she doesn't do really high effective damage, but she does do good damage. So I'll put her at a solid B. Shizuko is very niche for this fight. Ideally, you don't even need to level her really. You would only upgrade her for her stats, and even then I feel like it's kind of a waste. The reason why I'm dropping her in A tier is because you can use her to block the the waves of attacks on the second stage of the fight, where you get a bunch of just random projectiles flying at your characters, or at your students. So you can use her to kind of block them. It's very niche, but it's very useful, especially if you're struggling to finish off the boss. Let's say you're like three teams in, you're on your last team, you kind of need to do like 100,000 damage or something. You can throw in Shizuko just to block some damage so you don't have to use some healers. Or maybe you're out of healers and you have to use her. She's not too bad and it's kind of the same as Utaha, but I'll get onto her later. Starting with two... Oh, actually that was the end of the one stars. I think Shizuko is a two star, so whoops, but <laughs> let's keep going. Airi is, well, again, really niche. I like her. She's very interesting, especially because there's not many attack speed modifiers in this game. But she doesn't, well, her normal skill doesn't benefit that much. The boss doesn't attack too fast. And getting full value out of her is kind of difficult right now, especially because you have to two. 3 star her. You have to 3 star her for the attack speed buff, which is kind of difficult. Hanae, on the other hand, is along the lines of Serina. Very, very useful. I would say... I would say she's an S tier, but I feel like I put too many characters on S tier nowadays, so I'm gonna try to be a bit more selective on my tier, or my, my choices on which tier they're in. Hanae is very is probably one of the most versatile characters in the game. Now let's go before I continue, let's go check out her skills. Hanae. So you have a heal over time with her normal skill, which is relatively expensive but not too bad considering how much it heals. This is actually a pretty big heal. Her normal skill is really nice because this defense buff is actually extremely significant, especially when you're fighting bosses that deal a ton of damage. Shirokuro on extreme actually does a lot of damage. So having a defensive buff makes it a little bit easier. Again, it's not that great, but having some extra buffs is always nice. 
And finally, if you have her 3-star, this is the main reason why I think Hanahe is really good, is she provides the same passive as Hibiki. This crit damage multiplier just makes your damage go up by so much. This is such an important passive skill to run sometimes. And well, that's why I think Hanae is at least a solid A tier. I wouldn't say she's S, I don't think she shines. Maybe even Serena's better in some departments, but they're very similar, these two, Serena and Hibi Hanae. Junko kind of lacks in everything. Well, not really. Junko kind of just lacks damage. Her EX skill is too expensive and she just doesn't die, which is nice, but you kind of need damage in Shirokuro. It's really just a DPS check. Hanako is probably the weaker healer in this fight. AoE heals are nice, especially in Shirokuro with all the just visual clutter flying everywhere. It's really annoying and ideally you think that AoE heals are really useful. It's just that her AoE healing is kind of slow. And honestly, I would even say Fuka is a little better than her. Just because with Fuka you can... Well, I'll get to her. I'll get to her. Uh, Hasumi. Hasumi is... Hmm... I want to say A tier, but she's also kind of weak. Probably she's high B. I would say she's high B. Hasumi is generally, I think, a very underappreciated character. But again, since this fight is a blue armored fight, yellow damage is generally pretty weak in this fight. So I would say she's around B tier. Next up, Fuka. Fuka, I would say, is better than Hanako, and, well, still kind of worse than these two. I Normally, you would think that the defense buff you get from Fuka's normal skill is really nice, but the thing is, her EX skill just costs too much, so you don't really get too much benefits out of Fuka. And yes, you have the luxury of moving your characters in the first phase of the fight, but I find that it's it's a big chore to do, especially because you have to time it pretty well. Because if you don't, sometimes your characters just move back to that position and, well, you kind of wasted their movement. So Fuka, I feel like if you are really good at using her, she's probably an A tier. But that requires a lot of knowledge and timing. Shinatsu is a great burst healer. Probably better than... Uh, Probably around here. She's got a good defensive. She's got a really strong heal. Her passives are okay. It's just she doesn't do too much besides a big heal. Also, well, Chinatsu is also a free character and you can easily upgrade her to 5 star. So I, I like her at A tier. Kotama, S tier. No question. The attack buff is just too strong in this game. And she's still, I think, the only character that provides a party attack buff. So. So let's go check her out with her skills. Koltama. Now, you really should be buying her in the raid shop. I don't know if she's up on global, but I know she's on JP. So. Uh, it doesn't tell us, tell us when she gets. Er, it doesn't tell us when she comes down. Ah. Ah, it doesn't tell us when she appears in the raid shop. Oh well. Alright, so her EX skill is obviously the most important skill. You should max this first. This is probably the most important. And then after this, if you have a 3 star Kotama, you do her sub skill. Those two are the most valuable abilities. And then these you can kind of ignore. Like this is... This is free damage, and if you are going to min-max, like, yeah, free damage is free damage, right? But not really necessary. This this normal sk or this normal or EX skill is way more important. Ch 
Chise. Chise is really strong. I would argue S, but I don't think so. Let's double check real quick. Chise. I don't always remember her affinities. Oh, she is. She's an S tier in this one, right? Oh, she's an A. That's still fine. Then yeah, she's a solid A. I would say breaking S. It really depends. I have a 5-star Chise, and I feel like she does a lot of damage, especially the damage over time that she does with her third skill. Uh, this this sub-skill ability, where her attacks have a 10% chance to deal a burn. This is actually a very significant damage increase, especially if you're... Especially if your fights last about, or the whole like 3-4 minutes. This adds up a lot. And also, this ability is actually pretty strong, even though this looks pretty weak. Right? 4 cost, only 46 to 100% damage. But this actually does a ton of damage. She's not someone you should undervalue. Chise is really, really good. Now, for leveling priorities, I would do normal and passive first before EX. But EX is still really good. I think. EX is probably tied with subskill. Actually, no, I think subskill is the most important one. This this burn just does so much damage. I would say subskill, normal, normal or EX kind of equally these two, and then passive. This is extra damage though, so if you feel like you just need a bit more damage, leveling her passive is actually pretty good too. Just because this will scale her her subskill and her normal skill, and it scales all her other abilities, especially just because this is raw attack. So this is, but this just feels like the weaker ability. That's about it. Alright, sorry about that. Let's get back into it. Yuka, kind of a lackluster tank. For the most part, this fight is a, well, she's a yellow, not, she's a red damage tank. So, for the most part, she's just going to do resisted damage. Her EX skill doesn't really do too much. It's just a selfish defensive, and while the party is probably more important in this fight, mainly because your party is going to be a bunch of squishy damage dealers, so having a tank that just doesn't die is nice and all, but I feel like she just doesn't provide enough, and every other tank kind of can do the same, but a little bit better in other ways, so I'm inclined to put Yuka in C tier, but... Yeah, I like Yuka, but yeah. Now Utaha. Utaha has the same gimmick as Kotori, except her normal skill also does kind of the same thing. So she's, she's able to spawn multiple turrets to block multiple projectiles, let's say, from the second phase of Shirokuro, which would be a lot stronger than... She's a cool. Actually, I'll drop her down because of it now that I think about it. So let's double check this real quick. Shizuko and Utaha. Just because I'm. I want to be sure. Okay, this is a 3 cost, and Utaha is a 4 cost. So I get. So I guess that's the minor difference. Oh, whoops. Too many characters. So that's the minor difference. Shizuko is a little cheaper than Utaha, which I would actually say is stronger, but no. Utaha has multiple turrets and one an auto turret based on her normal skill is kind of nice. The thing is, you can't control her normal skill, so mm. hmm, yeah. not being able to control her normal skill. Makes it so that it's a little bit weaker because she could place turrets in positions where it won't help you. And it'll kind of just do like minor damage. Even if you have her level, it, the damage isn't that significant. But I guess it's some free DPS. And her her EX skill being 4 cost I think is the biggest detriment. So yeah, it's it's still very similar. Those two are very equal. But I would say that Utaha is a little weaker than Shizuko, just because I like cheaper costs over expensive cost skills. Next up, Nonomi. Nonomi 
kind of like the previous fights. Really just an auto attacker for, for total assault, unless you're doing chased. And that being said, her auto attacks are really good. So I would say around here, B tier? Yeah, not too bad. First, next up, we have Akane. Akane is, well, generally pretty good, right? I think on extreme, I would put her at S tier or A tier, but like high A, low S. But in hardcore, I would put her at like low A. Generally, the higher the difficulty, the more defense reduction matters. And, well, hardcore is not that difficult, so having her for defense reduction, especially if you, if, especially if you can build a four-man team of blue damage dealers, kind of don't need her. So I'll put her at, like, mid-A. And just because the, d the defense reduction is nice, but it's not necessary. Momoi is next, and, well, actually, I should recommend Akane skills. Whoops. Why is my net loading? Or struggling? Oh, she also has bad defense in this fight. But uh, yeah, Akane generally kind of squishy, especially in Shirokuro. So you gotta, gotta consider that when you're drafting her. Really, all you really need to level is this EX skill. This is all you need to do. It's really for the defense reduction. Leave it at 3 until you can go for 5, basically. Other than that, her sub skill is not bad. Other than that, her sub skill is not bad. Defense or evasion reduction is not that diff or is not that bad, but I feel I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter in PvP or PvE. So actually, yeah, just stick with leveling sub skill or normal skill. Got Oh no! <laughs> Just stick with leveling EX skill. Oh my god! <laughs> For Momoi, uh, not much to say. Kind of bad. Her damage is. Her damage kind of relies on having Midori in the party, and well, I wouldn't use her and Midori together in a blue fight. I would probably just use one, and that one would be Midori. So, you know. Oh, why is Iris here? Tsubaki is, well, better than Yuka. You can use her just to tank the boss if you're out of damage dealers, but she's kind of just there. Generally, I don't think tanks are really great in Shirokuro. I guess they're okay, but there's a lot of... Especially with the summer event that's coming out, there's a lot of extra tanky characters, like, well, Tsurugi, so you don't need Tsubaki, but if, you, if you're if you out of characters, out of options, she's not that bad. Ayane? Akane? Akane? No, Ayane, right? This is Ayane. This is Ayane. Oh my god. Okay, Ayane is kind of in the realm of B tier. I wouldn't say her heals are, aren't are that bad. She does provide extra health, which is nice. But overall, I find that her healing is a bit awkward to use, especially because you have to kind of predict with her healing, mainly because she sends out a drone, and then the heal comes after that drone drops the package. So it's a bit weaker, mainly because... You can't get an instant heal with her. It's more of like a delayed instant heal. So that kind of makes it an issue, especially if they're really low and you barely got the EX or barely got the cost to do the EX skill. This makes it a little it's kind of a timing problem. Same with Fuka. Next up Irisu. I need to remember her affinities. Irisu. Wait, did I spell it wrong? I D A I D S. Oh my god. Oh, it's A R I. Oh, oh, oh. Adisu, Adisu, Adisu. Okay, okay. 
Uh, affinity? Oh, she's good for this map. I would say, hmm, because she's good for this map, I would say probably A tier. She's, the, the biggest issue with Iris is, well, the charm. Her damage is not too bad. Uh, this passive is really nice, especially increasing her energy levels. Generally, when you fire her EX skill, you want at least one energy level or else you don't get great value out of it. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're using her. And for leveling skills, EX skill definitely needs to be maxed first. And then, I would probably do this skill, actually. Hmm. This is 20 seconds every 25, so this is a 5 second downtime. And this is every time your EX skill is used. So yeah, I think I would use I would do sub skill first, and then normal skill, and then passive. But this extra attack is nice, too. Th like, her normal skill and passive are kind of equal, I, I would say. Yeah. I would say they're kind of equal. This provides more crit rate, right? Uh... Hmm. It actually... Eh, actually... No, I would... Hmm. Well, this... Actually, no, no. Her sub-skill is more for consistency purposes, I guess. Yeah, this is more for consistency purposes. Because every time you use this, you'll get this ability, so it will, it will apply the crit rate. But this one, you won't, you'll have to wait for this to come up, or this normal skill to come up before you use the EX skill. So this is like a time loss, kind of, depending on how the fight goes. I mean, they're, these two are kind of equal, to be fair. This one's just more crit rate, this one's more consistent. Pick whichever one you like better. Azusa is really just a form of defense reduction. That's, that's about it. For this fight, she's really just defense reduction. That's not much else you can do about her. The other Azusa, on the other hand, she is so busted. She's top spot. Oh my god, this is one. Of, this is one of my favorite characters. Azusa is so cool. She. The main. The main problem is that all her abilities just do too much damage. I think this one's just crit damage buff, right? Oh no, this is a nuke, right? Yeah, this is a wait. Oh, this is... Wait, what? No, this is supposed to be a nuke, isn't it? I thought this was a nuke. Am I wrong? Hold up, let me open JP real quick. Oh, no, it's just a damage off. Okay. I'm mistaken. But for Azusa, for Summer Azusa, the most important skills are her sub-skill and her EX skill. This does a ton of damage, and this... Well, this is good for future, for the future. Like, this is good in other fights. This is not great in Shirokuro, but this is great in, like, almost every other fight. This this character is super versatile, basic, by the way. If you're going to pull for one of the summer characters, I think Summer Azusa outshines Summer Mashiro, or Swimsuit Mashiro. But Swimsuit Mashiro is one of the few characters that destroys Tsubaki in PvP. She makes it so that... The meta goes from a healing meta to a just all-out damage meta. So keep that in mind when you're pulling. But Azusa is such a busted character. She is this this character is busted. Okay, <laughs> that's all I can say. Chirino doesn't provide much besides a crit rate debuff, which is actually pretty strong to be fair. I would say low A. This her debuff is that good. Her debuff and extra cost or free cost recovery is really really useful. But I wouldn't use her unless you have a. But I wouldn't use her unless you have a strong damage team that relies on. Let's say you run like a Haruna, Azusa. Yeah, let's say you run Haruna, Azusa, Chirino, and Akane. Then I think Chirino is fine because you have two you have a bunch of defense reduction, right? With Azusa and Akane, and then you have a crit rate reduction, and then you have Haruna to hit that fat crit. And then you probably run Koltama for the extra damage, and then you probably run like Hibiki because you're running Chirino for the crit, you know, something like that. Um by the way, that team, okay. I wouldn't use that for extreme, okay? Just saying. 
you, I'll get to why later. Amy is kind of lackluster. I would say around Yuka tier. Actually, a little bit better, maybe. I'll put her at B, just to be fair. B for Booba. <laughs> Amy's good and all, but the main issue I have is that she doesn't really provide anything besides, well, she sits there, right? Haruna almost always S tier in Shirokuro. Haruna's just too strong. I don't think her affinity aligns with this map though. Haruna. Yeah, she's a neutral, which is okay. It's not negative, so she doesn't lose stats. But a little bit to be desired, I guess. Hibiki, as usual, just S tier, mainly because she's a passive character and she provides extra damage. She's still, even even if she does resisted damage, she's actually pretty strong in Shirokuro still, which is surprising. I would, eh, I would drop her to A. I think I'll drop her to A, just to be fair to the other ones. Mainly to A. Hifumi, while she sounds nice, is, well, pretty lackluster, mainly because she's like an Utaha and a Shizuko, but... I think she's like 6 cost or 5 cost, right? Hifumi. Alright, this, this Hifumi is like a 5 cost, right? Or 6 cost, which is way too expensive just to block one attack. Yeah, it's a 5 cost. Yeah, you get some cost back, but why would I do that when I can spend 3 cost, you know? And, and she takes up a striker slot, which are very important in this fight. This is why I don't think Hifumi is going to be that great in this one. Now, Hoshino. Hoshino, probably a higher tier tank, mainly because she does damage, too. She's tanky, she survives, and she does damage. Hoshino, okay. Um, The thing about her is, generally, I wouldn't prefer using her. She's not that great, but if you are forced to use a tank, maybe you're out of characters or something. Hoshino is probably a better tank than these other tanks, right? Iori is an A tier and probably the only yellow damage gonna that's gonna be in this tier. Iori just does insane amounts of damage no matter what, right? And well, she's boosted, right? If we're talking about skill leveling priority, EX skill first, then sub, then normal, and you can ignore passive unless you're doing pvp passive only really matters in pvp for iori everything else try to max but go for ex first this is just well as you can see you know she is the <laughs> especially in pvp oh my god she's still a monster oh i think i lied I forgot about Karen. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Izuna. Izuna A tier. Probably A tier. She's probably the tankiest character to run for, Sh for Shirokuro that still does damage. Izuna, I would say, is very good for Shirokuro, but I think in this terrain, she's not great. Izuna, right? Yeah, she does not like the outdoors. For some reason, a ninja is a neat, but okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, let's let's talk about skill skill leveling priority for Izuna. For Izuna, I like her normal skill for or her EX skill first. Actually, no, no, yeah, normal skill first. This this is all her damage. Izuna's damage comes from this ability, and it gets boosted based on the synergies from her EX and her sub skill. So what happens is these two abilities give her just damage and attack speed, which allows her to do this more often, right? Which modifies this damage, right? The da the attack buff from her sub skill will modify her normal skill damage, making it a lot stronger. And well, always, well, this is last, even though I would like to level this early. Izuna doesn't have really high crit, right? Where's her critical rate? Yeah, it's not too high. But, well, generally Izuna is a good character in Shirokuro, in my opinion. I really like Izuna. I would say if you have her 5 star, definitely use her, especially in extreme. 
mainly because she has a lot of useful utility. You can move her around with, with her EX skill, and well, even though she can't tank as well as Tsurugi, Izuna is really really strong still. Karen is another character which I think is actually an A tier and I can't believe there's three and I said there was only one. I'm a liar. Karen's really strong. Her nuke is probably on par with Hibiki. Eh, probably better than Hibiki to be fair. Karen has f actually gotten a lot more popular lately in JP. A lot more fights have been using Karen and I would say Karen's gotten a lot stronger in the game mainly because content that benefits Karen has been released more often and while well, this this fight's also kind of in favor of Karen yep neutral affinity leveling priority EX skill because this is her nuke and then normal skill because another nuke and well this now depends on how strong your party is if your if your party is really really strong I would do sub skill first but if you if you feel like you lack damage and your party isn't that strong do passive skill first Karen is just an all-out damage dealer and honestly one of the best characters nowadays Koharu is definitely the S tier healer of this fight especially in EX mode she makes it very comfortable you can run like Koharu uh, Serena if you feel like you die too much, or you can just run solo heal Koharu. This character is basically Serena plus Hanako, but better, right? The problem is she takes up a striker slot, so you kind of have to draft around that. So you have to give up some damage or some utility, mainly for her, but then you make up for it by putting the damage slot in your subs or in your supports right so you, let's say you give up serena and then you throw in karen it's kind of something like that maki is just a form of damage reduction and well not that interesting to this fight she's okay swimsuit mashiro is kind of part of the big three really. The thing is Sumsuit Mashiro's passive skill sucks so she's actually a little bit worse than these three for supports. What I like about Mashiro is I like to use her for for teams where or for fights where I almost beat it but I need to push out that extra bit of damage and while well, I'm out of time so I have to run another team I would throw in Sumsuit Ma Mashiro in there and just spam EX skills. Run like a Shun, run some tanky characters, and just keep spamming Mashiro. That's what she's really good for. And she's also a Shun Slayer. Or not, not a Shun Slayer. She's a Tsubaki Slayer. Her skill kit is very similar to Mashiro, except that for her normal skill, this is a crit damage buff to the highest attacker, which is nice, where you can like throw that with Haruna, right? Because she's a sniper, she'll always be the highest attacker. The thing about this thing, or this passive is... It is... Oh, wait. Yeah, this, there's a 10 second downtime. So you have to time your buffs accordingly if you're doing it this way. Or if you're doing it this way. So just keep that in mind when you're using Mashiro. Or Swimsuit Mashiro. Still, overall though, she's still a really good character. And she would be very beneficial. Now Midori. Midori is actually a pretty decent character. I would say A tier. Shizuko is still the worst of the A tiers. Uh, Midori, I would kind of use her as... If you uh, saw my, I think my... Is it Hero? One of my guides. Um, she's, all, she's really just a side healer for this fight. So if you ran like... Let's say... Let's say you don't have Koharu. And you don't want to run Karu, you can use her Midori and like Serena, and you'll probably have enough heals for the fight. Overall, though, Midori's damage is okay. It's it's not that bad. Tsubaki just 
she's too slow. Her attack speed compared to Swimsuit Tsubaki, it, Tsurugi, Tsurugi is just too slow. Swimsuit Tsurugi just attacks way faster, and this Tsurugi is yellow damage on a blue armored fight. So, kind of around here. Kind of the same with Sumire with tanks, except she's probably around the same as right here. Sumire just... I wish she would get content where she shines, but she doesn't provide debuffs, she doesn't do much, she's just like a weird tanky character. I don't know. I feel like... <sighs> I wish Sumire was good. I really wish Sumire was good. Neru is just a cycling character. As in, you use her just as spam abilities to move on to the next ability. She does the job well, but not that useful. Her damage is okay too, though, to be fair. And, well, the last two characters, Shun, kind of, if you use her with, uh, if you use Shun with Mashiro, she's really good, mainly just a spam EX skill. But overall, Shun's not that great. And Yuzu... Again, I feel like Yuzu is really weak in this fight, actually. Eh, but that's unfair for her to put her in C. These are the characters I definitely wouldn't use, and these are the characters I would be okay with using for B. And then A's are like the stronger characters. Right? Yeah, these are like... Yeah. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Anyways, this is my tier list. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.